Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now it seems like we've gone a bit overboard with the whole Ryzen videos recently. This is probably what, three in a row now? But one of the most requested components was the new Ryzen 3 3200G, the cheapest APU in the current 3000 series lineup. We checked out the 3400G the other day, found that it was a very capable APU in terms of both of the processing power and the onboard Vega 11 graphics. But the 3200G, is a little bit weaker, it features four cores, four threads, but it is a lot cheaper as well. Instead of slapping it in my standard motherboard though, today I've actually put together a whole Ryzen 3 3200G based system. So this PC cost me no more than £300 and I think if you're looking for a nice entry level gaming system but you want to use all new components and you don't really have that much of a budget, then this may be something that you might want to consider. So let's get into the build and uh, I'll talk about what I've assembled here as well as any changes you might want to consider making in your own setup. So the obvious component here is the 3200G, the four core, four threaded APU clocked at 3.6 gigahertz with a boost of four gigahertz and a integrated graphics speed of 1250 megahertz, up from 1100 of the 2200G that we saw from the previous generation. This is essentially a Zen Plus refresh though. Now, for the RAM, I've got 8 gigs of 3000 megahertz Viper DDR4. Pretty cheap stuff. Perhaps 16 gigs would be the better bet, but I think if you're looking at building a system like this, most people will probably go for 8 gigs at this sort of price point, but I could be wrong. Now, for the storage, we've gone with a Kingston 480 gig SSD. I think an SSD in a build like this is certainly the way to go. You can always add another storage solution later down the line whether it be another SSD or a traditional hard disk drive. As for the case this was one of the cheapest cases I could find and it also came with this Colink PSU which I wasn't sure about and I'd still recommend getting something different. Reason being is that there aren't really many reviews of these units out there. I just thought to myself why not build the system anyway um, considering we got this as a freebie. Looking into it a little bit more and it seems overclockers use power supplies like this in their budget builds. I'm not sure if they use the exact model number as this. They seem to be okay units. A system like this certainly won't put that much stress on this 300 watt PSU here, but I'd recommend getting something different, maybe a 500 watt Corsair unit just in case you want to upgrade to a discrete GPU in the future. So in terms of Cinebench R15, before we get into games, the Ryzen 3 3200G sat between the i5-4670K and the i3-9100F, which is itself a 3.6 GHz 4-core, four 4-threaded four CPU, but it does cost a little bit more. Actually, it probably costs about the same at this point in time. In a single core test, the Ryzen 3 scored 148 points, which again, put it close to an i5-4670K, but it also outperformed the Ryzen 5 1400 a little bit. In terms of gaming, well, I tried to maintain 30 frames per second at 1080p, but where this wasn't possible, I dropped the resolution down in order to try and maintain that 30 FPS target. If we exceeded it, well, that was just a bonus, and if we exceeded 60 frames per second, again, that was an even bigger bonus. Starting off with Battlefield 5, and I was able to hit 30 frames per second, at least at 1080p, but there were a few issues here and there with stutter, and I found that 900p was actually the sweet spot. Here we were averaging around 40 to 45 frames per second. There were a couple of frame drops here and there, a couple of stutters, and I think that's something that the... RAM amount would probably solve. If you upgraded to 16 gigs, then you may see a few less stutters here and there, but of course a discrete graphics card would also do the trick nicely, and you should keep that in mind for any future upgrade plans. Now to my surprise, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds was also playable at 1080p, albeit with the very low settings. We were able to maintain at least 30 frames per second. You can see by the 1% and 0.1% lows, there were a couple of hiccups here and there, but it was nothing too major. The game doesn't exactly look fantastic at these settings, but, I mean, it's playable. And that's pretty impressive, considering we're using nothing but the onboard Vega 8. 
Now I'm not sure how this GPU compares to some of the budget graphics cards out there, but that's something I may have to investigate too at a later date. Play Unknown's Battlegrounds though, well, on the 3200G it ran pretty well, and if you're putting together a new system using this, you won't be disappointed. Providing, of course, you do manage your expectations somewhat. Now, when Far Cry New Dawn 1080p was too much for our little processor here, and 900p meant that we did see a few drops below 30 as well, so I went straight in at 720p to record the footage, and this is where I think we saw the best result. You can see by the 1% low that we were dropping to near 30, and I think that any higher we would have seen more regular frame dips, but 720p with the low preset, seem to do the trick for this title. Again, this is a pretty new game, so to see it running here on this component, well, it's certainly very impressive to me at least. I'm not sure if you guys feel the same, but I really like this little thing. In comparison to say the 2200G, the frame rate difference isn't that significant as it would be between the 2400G and the 3400G, if you know what I mean. With the 3400 we were seeing in some cases 10 frames per second more than we were with the 2400. But here the 2200 and the 3200 are probably only going to be ever so slightly different in terms of gaming. There may be one or two titles where this differs a little bit. But the results will be a little bit closer if, if that sentence, that mess of a sentence made any sense. Now it's no surprise that Fortnite runs perfectly at 1080p with the low preset. Now you could turn things up to medium or even high if you're happier with closer to 30 frames per second, but 1080p with the low settings here will grant you at least 60 frames per second most of the time. Something I feel is sort of important for online competitive titles like this. The higher the frame rate the better, and in that regard I think Fortnite did very well here. I can never gauge how Fortnite's going to perform on some discrete GPUs that you think would be quite good, it performs terribly, and on others you get a better result than you anticipated. I don't know what's up with Fortnite's optimization, but it's always a surprise when I fire the game up on any piece of hardware as to what it's going to do performance-wise. I sort of like that in a way. Now Grand Theft Auto 5, although it's getting on a bit now, but it's still very popular, hence why we've thrown it back into the game's benchmarked on this channel, performs pretty well. You'll see at least 60 frames per second on average at 1080p, might I add, with the normal settings, which is equivalent to any other game's low settings, really. There are so many settings in the menu here, you can feel free to play about with them how you like, and you still probably achieve at least 60, if not 30, should you want to turn things up even higher. Um, so, yeah, Grand Theft Auto V is one of those games where you're going to have a pretty decent experience when using the 3200G and 8 gigs of RAM. The game still looks pretty good as well, so it's going to be an all-round pretty decent experience. And throughout all of these tests, the system stayed very quiet. I've actually got it on in the background here. Yeah, it certainly is very, very quiet indeed. Now finally we have Rage 2. 1080p again was too much for this little chip. 900p allowed us to average exactly 30 with the low settings, but 720p with VSync off was the sweet spot here, and we averaged over 40 FPS with generally quite respectable 1% and 0.1% lows as well. There really wasn't too much stutter to speak of, and considering Rage is probably the newest game on today's list of benchmarked titles, I think it did very well. And when you consider the fact it does put a certain amount of strain on even the top-end GPUs out there, if you turn things all the way up, I think for it to achieve at least 40 frames per second, on this sub $100 APU is a pretty remarkable fate, feat, fate, feat. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, there we have it. AMD's newest APU, the Ryzen 3 3200G. The one to buy, it would seem, if you want a cheap entry-level gaming or even everyday system without spending too much. Pair it with eight gigs of RAM and a cheap B450 board and you're good to go. Also bear in mind that the power supply is an important component in any PC build and should be chosen wisely to avoid catastrophic failure and unwanted explosions. There are a ton of recommendations online. Um, there's a pretty decent tier list over on the Linus Tech Tips forums and I'd strongly advise checking that out. But as for this build, I think it's an okay combination of components. I think once you've paired the processor, motherboard 
and RAM with an SSD as well, you're going to see a nice increase in load times and boot times. I think an SSD with a build like this is the way to go um, because of those aforementioned speed improvements. But the prices of solid state drives are also dropping as well. And I think at this point in time, they're at a reasonably decent price. I didn't pay too much for the 480 gig Kingston, probably about 35, 40 British pounds, which isn't too bad, I feel, for the improvements that we'll see. With all that said, I hope you enjoyed the 3200G review. I hope any of you shopping around for one of these find this video helpful. If you do, leave a like on it down below. If you didn't like it, leave a dislike on it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully I'll see all of you, sorry I'm quite tired, in the next one where we will be looking at something that's not Ryzen related. I think it's time for a break from Ryzen, as good as they are. Thank you, and good night.